Aloha, it's Katie, and let me tell you about this really eventful weekend. On a run from my given disaster. Speed away from the holy mind. Pride. That's where I never thought it would matter. If I'm gone by now. First things first, after I did my college week in my life video, a lot of you were requesting I do more vlog videos of my week. At first I didn't know how to possibly do that without vlogging every single day and just, I don't know, selling my whole life to YouTube, but then I was thinking, actually, I do bring my vlog camera everywhere and I can quite easily capture shots of my day. It's just I don't like walking around, vlogging with my hands up, attracting attention all day. So. It gave me an idea to try something new. A lot of other YouTubers do this, but they film the footage for the vlogs and afterwards overlay it with a narration of what happened. And personally, I think that makes it a lot more interesting because I can share deeper reflections and funny thoughts that were going through my head that maybe I couldn't have said in the moment. So let's try that. Saturday kicked off with Holy. We're at Holy right now, which is the celebration of color. Holy was hosted by Cornell's Hindu. You guys have probably seen all the iconic photos of people throwing rung, which is the colored powder or water balloons. And just, they were such Instagram worthy photos. The second I got there, my friend already started attacking us with the color. Dude, I look like I'm bleeding. <laughs> After Holy, I went to a Vietnamese event called Cafe Saigon. And it was just a dinner hosted by CVA, Cornell Vietnamese Association. And there was Vietnamese food, which they cook by themselves, traditional dances, Vietnamese wear. I didn't vlog it, but I did meet some really cool people. Shout out to Rosie Lynn and Laura. When we finished dinner, it was around 8 p.m. and something called Greek Freak was happening that night. Greek Freak was an event hosted by MGFC, which is the Multicultural Greek and Fraternity Council. So there were different, a lot of performances or as they call it, strolling by frats and sororities that were part of this council. I technically rushed for an Asian sorority back in the fall and spring, so I made a lot of friends through that and I wanted to go support them. That said, it was really cool to see my friends dance. When that finished, it was around 10 p.m. and I still had one more event for the night, the CIS formal or Computer and Information Science Formal. That actually started at 9, but I knew we were gonna go late. <laughs> Fashionably late. What I did not expect was quite a lit time. There was a dance floor that people were really dancing to when I got there, and it was very fun. I saw a lot of my friends, and afterwards there was an after party, but I did not go to that. I was so tired already. Around midnight, I was back in my dorm, but I did not sleep till 3 a.m. because I think I was planning my YouTube uploads, but guys, that night was crazy, okay? I was woken up at 3.40 a.m. after going to bed at 3 and someone who I think was drugged or hallucinating walked into my room while I was asleep and things got really interesting and terrifying. <laughs> but for confidentiality, we're not gonna go into it. It was a really long day and I only slept around 4.30 a.m. but I was up early <laughs> at around 9.30 a.m. because on Sundays, I go to church. I didn't vlog church. I don't know if that's weird. Sometimes I feel kind of weird vlogging that. As if it's something I'm trying to show off, church is a time for me to be with God, start the week off right with good spiritual health. After church, there was a TEDx Cornell event happening on campus, which I went to. Some of the coolest takeaways I got was number one, a professor from Princeton who talked about consciousness and linked it with the future of artificial intelligence. No matter how sophisticated our gadgets become, if we don't understand consciousness, if we don't understand how to engineer it, that future isn't possible. What I found that was really interesting was he talked about how everyone talks about our future home being on Mars or a different planet and we're always trying to find out what next planet is going to be inhabitable for humans. But the game changer was realistically, it's not going to be us physically going to start civilization on these planets. It's going to be our mind our intelligence and all of that one day is just going to be captured in some device, some robot, some machine. And migrated from a brain to an artificial platform. Think about that. Instead of dying, we go to a digital afterlife. A person's thoughts and personality, emotions and memories, a person's wisdom would be able to live indefinitely. That was pretty mind-boggling to think and I was just wondering, is it really humanity or just a replication of it without the emotions, and arguably the other things that make us human. But there were also really cool topics. I was 18 and I had a complete crisis of character. Who was 
satisfied without this thing that I was adapt. I wish that I could tell you that I quickly figured out that I am not what I do, but it's actually not true. I just threw myself into the next thing and the next thing. How do you break that? So for me, that meant trying to understand what I was actually optimizing for. And the thing that I always optimize for is to surround myself with the type of brilliant people who I think make a world that I want to live in. And one guy I love because I think a lot of his lessons were themes that I already tried to strive for in everyday life. We have pretty nice lives here. You know, objectively speaking, we're at high grade school. We've got air conditioning, we've got the internet, electricity, we've got great food, we've got elevators, thank goodness. Um, you know, we've got these great things. But we get so caught up in school and grades. We get so caught up in work, job offers, clubs, social commitments, you know, it overwhelms us. Accept your circumstances and focus on what you can control. Do not place happiness in superficial measures, but rather find happiness through people. All negative emotion through the power of gratitude. As I was heading back to North Campus to my ballroom dancing class, yeah, I'm taking ballroom dancing for PE. I just stopped to admire spring at Cornell because it was a sunny day, it was warm. Literally, I think it's so bipolar. The day before, it was pretty awful. But I think it really makes you appreciate the good days and also find the beauty in days that initially may not seem really pretty. This was my first time experiencing spring because I grew up in the Philippines and we only have one season, summer. Two if you count rainy. I was just so awestruck, inspired, just by the campus and all of God's creation. And that sums up my weekend. Let me know what you think of this kind of storytelling. Personally, I think it's much more interesting because I can just show you the important events without going into the very boring things. Like that college week in my life I did, I was just studying all day. Basically, I don't watch that stuff. And personally, it feels very repetitive to be filming. Yes, it is an accurate depiction of what college life is a lot of the times, but for my YouTube channel, I'd rather be showing you the more unique and exciting experiences that college has to offer. I would appreciate your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe while you're down there. I upload new videos every week and I'm really hustling as a college student to get these up. Make sure to turn my notifications on by clicking the bell so you get notified immediately when I upload. And follow me on social media, I love KDX. And if you want to see more vlogs, day in the life or week in my life, I've done a ton in my college vlogs playlist, so click the top right to watch more of that. Thank you for watching. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next week with another new video. Bye guys.